Mm -hmm. Do you think we have anybody else coming here? I don't suppose we were as close to 2.30 as possible, so. Thank you for that. <clears throat> Why do you do it? All right, so I guess we're gonna give you a couple things we'll talk about. Um, we're here because one, we've had a bunch of recent issues with the system, which is still going on as of today. Um, so one, one part of the discussion will be what's going on right now. Um, the other part is future. Um, you know, we, we're definitely looking like we're going to need some sort of upgrade for the future um, to the whole system, which big big money item. So that's something we got to talk about. Um, and another big part of this is I think some discussion with Hart's location about um, the, the money side of it for future stuff, not necessarily discussion on what's going on right now for like repairs with Hart's location because they've never been really a part of anything. But anything in the future, it's definitely a big item to that for them because Jeff has some major reception issues in Crawford Knots and Hart's location, which is a big concern for Bartlett and for him. So those are kind of the three topics we got. We kind of wanted to, we, I wanted to get together and discuss it because this is, you know, with, with having rate radio cameras, it, it's a big, it's a pretty major item. I mean, if you call 911 because you're having a heart attack, you want it to get to us. Or if you have a car fire or a car accident or a house fire. And so it, it's pretty high on the importance list to make sure you guys know what's coming down the road. Right? Yeah. They say. So that's kind of an overview of why we're here, I guess. Um, if you, you guys have probably never seen the radio site, I know. but this is a picture of the top of Tyrol, which I'm sure Gene knows that this cement pad is where the chairlift used to get off the chairlift. So that's, <coughs> that's our site, solar powered. The radios are in that building. Um, And with two wind turbines also, is that what I see? No, the wind tur turbine lasted about a month before Rye Mice wiped it completely out. Um, <laughs> so on, on recent issues, that, that site is very good reception uh, for the majority of, like Jackson, we get incredible reception from there. You guys, Jeff can explain better, but there's some issues with Bartlett Village in Crawford Notch, which have always been some issues, but um, as far as being able to get reception to everybody that made a community reception. Um, but being Tyrol, it's a good site for reception for the majority of stuff, but it is remote because of its elevation. It's, it's not that far away, but it's remote in its elevation. Um, Ice, wind, bad weather, thunder, lightning. I've got, I've got records all the way that goes back to 87 um, of maintenance. And the amount of times we've had to replace antenna is, it, it happens, it can happen often depending on what we get for weather. Uh, we were, for instance, we replaced an antenna in 2020 and that's the one that got wiped out recently and why we're having issues basically as of today. <laughs> um, so you never know, you might go five years, you might go 10 years on an antenna, you might go two years, depending on what happens with weather. As we all know, weather has changed drastically, I think in the last five or eight years, with the amount of weird weather we get, um, with what is going on in the environment. Um, so we're noticing it on Tyrol, pretty drastic. Um, I was up there the Saturday, the radio system was down. Uh, we had recorded temperatures on halfway down Tyrol of negative 54 when, you know, windshield factor. So that wasn't a very fun Saturday. And the radios are only listed for minus 22 degrees. <clears throat> Um, so originally, I'm not sure that windshield affects 
inanimate object, so I'm not sure. Okay, I mean, it's going to affect the person getting up there to repair yes. it, but I don't think. Yeah, because but if there's moisture in the near the radio, I, I was told wind chill affects moisture. That's okay. why it affects us. Yeah. So if there happens to be any kind of moisture around the radio or in the radio, then it would affect it, correct? Okay. The cold temperatures, right? Yeah. So basically, as of right now, we're waiting on an antenna. The system's working, but it's not working very good at all because it's hooked up to a temporary antenna. It's not the right antenna. It's working, but not very good. Um, I think we're getting beat up a little bit on supply and demand because we've been wait, you know, I, I don't know how long we're gonna have to wait for the parts to come. As everybody knows, supply and demand issues, you can't get, you know, we used to get air pack stuff in <coughs> two months and now we're waiting a year and a half for air pack stuff, just as an example. So, so what is the status of the antenna? The one we're supposed to, uh, I called yesterday and he hasn't gotten back to me. It was supposed to be three weeks. It's been three weeks and all the suppliers didn't have it in stock. So I think that means we're waiting for it to come from China or somewhere, wherever they make them. So you have tried different places? Uh, Osprey Mountain tried multiple places and every, everywhere the antenna was out of stock, wherever they buy the stuff. Um, he didn't get back to me since I talked to him yesterday with where we were at with it. You know, I'm like, you got you gotta tell me good, bad, or different if we're if it's on a boat from China, if it's if it's coming from Minnesota or and I haven't heard from him yet. And I have nothing against Austin Mountain or like Mark said very good, but have we tried other suppliers? I know he's tried different places where the antennas come from. Um, but there isn't a lot of options for yeah, <laughs> Places like Osprey Mountain aren't just around every corner. I don't forget that. Um, so I, I don't even know, you know if r and Electronics is still around. Or, or no, what. I spoke with um, two-way communication last year on some equipment problems, and they weren't willing to deal with us unless they were having, unless they had our entire account. So they don't want to step on Osprey Mountain's toes unless they're taking over the whole thing. So it's difficult to go other places. And that was Osprey Radio Shack. <laughs> and just so you know, the antenna that was up there, the new one that we bought in 2020, was a 65 gain antenna. And we had problems then. Now we're in a zero gain antenna, so you can imagine the problems we're having now. Will you translate what that means, though? Because I don't know what gain means. That would be you. Uh, so say the radio, the radio, the mobile radio we have right now, puts out 35 watts. So that no gain antenna, or unity antenna, they call it, would just be putting out 35 watts. So the minute you put that 35 watts to a higher gain antenna, which is, let's say it's six point something dB gain, um, that's a doubling of the power. Okay. Um, so technically, well, it's, it's, it's uh, So you're gaining it's, power. Yeah, you're gaining power much more, yeah. And it also, gain is good. And yeah, and also the, um, the way the pattern comes out, it's not just one big low, like if you were to look on like a oscilloscope or something. something like yeah exactly yeah. something like that it's more concentrated on the elevation and there's actually down tilt since the um, antenna is up on the mountain right. you want to get it down in the valley some of that signal so there's like a five degree or ten degree down tilt so that's basically it so major improvement point it's up there and there may not be an antenna somewhere it just seems to me there must be but it just seems I wouldn't think Osley Mountain Electronics would hold up another company mm -hmm. for an emergency like this. I'm guessing they would say, fine, well, go wherever you get it, we're, we're not going to hold you responsible for not doing business with us. I would think in this kind of case, I don't know. That's yeah, it wasn't Osley Mountain that said that. It was the other company that I was trying to get well, help from. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where we're at with what's going on right now. On top, the other item that goes along with that is we've got two radios. And when I say radio, it's a box that's got three radios in it. And the three radios are how, to keep it simple, is how 
Carol goes, it goes to the top of the mountain, and then the mountain goes back to Carol, and then the mountain goes to Pagers. So, but it takes three radios to make our type of system work. So we have two of them, one for backup and one for normal. So if one goes down, we can replace it with the spare. One of those banks of radios, we had a radio failure. I don't know, three or four years before you were here, three or four years ago. And one of those radios is a new radio, which isn't the best. <laughs> it is, it is what it is, but any, anything new today, as everybody knows, is nothing but a computer. Um, we're having some issues with that particular radio, the way it's programmed, and it does so much stuff that we've had some <coughs> interference stuff going on. Where, where the radio shuts, you know, if, if Carroll County tries to tone us out, say, say the Bartlett Jackson ambulance for a heart attack, the tone doesn't go out right um, because it shuts down <coughs> momentarily. So you might get, not get the tone, you might get the tone, you might not get the words. So that's happening right now also, which when they go up to try to do the repairs to the antenna, hopefully they can reprogram that radio. Hopefully they can fix that issue. You know, it's unlike the older radios that were much simpler. Did I, I guess, did I say that right, yeah. Kevin? Yeah, um, yeah. I did comment on that radio really too. And, and I did ask Craig at Osby Mountain, he said there's no way around that. You, you just can't buy simple radios anymore, just like you can't buy simple phones anymore. Um, you know, everything's, everything's a computer. And because of the remote, remoteness of Tyrol, it, it, that doesn't help either, you know, the temperatures and the wind, and you know, if the wind blows and the antenna moves right, maybe it's dropped, you know, it, it just, that's the other thing that's going on right now. We originally, the weekend of the bad weather when the system went completely down, we were thinking maybe it was a temperature related thing with the radio, but we don't, we don't know for sure, but we don't think that that was the cause of the radio going down. Um, which, but that nothing's, nothing's figured out completely wow. yet, so it, it's still possible. One of the things that changed though is when you shut off the Mount, Mount Washington Observatory, we got our radios back. So, <laughs> Mount Washington Observatory back in 07, um, went to Progen, the landowner, and asked if he could get in the building up there. <clears throat> for their radios, their monitoring stuff, for whatever they do. And he said yes, and he went to the selectman in Jackson, and Jack and the fire chief at the time had, had a, I've got a copy of the letter, big, big letter, big selectman's meeting about, we didn't really want them in there because of interference and because of future upgrades, but we got railroaded out and the selectman at that time gave the observatory permission, so the observatory is in the building with us with equipment. What we found that the weekend we had the issues, finally it took a couple days, I went back up that Sunday and in talking with Osby Mountain on the phone, trying to get the system to at least work a little bit. Um, when we shut Mount Washington Observatory off, it started working. So we had some interference stuff with the observatory that I don't believe they've gotten up there yet. Their system should still be off and they've got to figure out what was interfering with it. Kevin, I think Kevin was up there with, with me for that. So there's also that issue. So that's pretty much all I've got on recent, recent issues. Just a quick comment on that new radio in that sack. We didn't know it at the time, but <clears throat> when we, we tried both, um, you know, the replacement radio and the both stacks and we couldn't get it working and so we had the newer stack in there with a new radio on top and I guess there's a feature in there that when it goes to transmit, if there's interference on the transmit, like frequency or whatever, it won't transmit. And it, it, there's a little green warning light and we were talking to one of the technicians from Mossby on the phone. And he goes, um, he goes, he was asking what else is on up there? And we said, well, you know, I think it's the observatory. And that's when we switched it off. And sure enough, the thing transmitted. 
And the green light went off. The green light went off, right. right. So but the radio is still doing so some fun yeah, stuff. Yeah, it's still doing no, so I think there's so many settings in that radio that there's stuff like without the service manual, we don't know what's what. But once they go up there and fine tune that, maybe we'll get working right. Um, but up to that point, like it, we, you know, we spent what 36 or 48 hours of dispatchers. It was a $500 phone call on Saturday to a technician to go over some stuff, and then plus all the other, just the other phone calls. You know? yeah. So uh -huh. we probably spent $3,000 already up to that Sunday on just just getting the system you know, ready to go and back up and running. Because that's the whole idea of you know the dual radios. You know, radio is now we just go up there and switch it out and we're out of there. You know, usually and that's that's been in many cases that's been the situation. And that brings up a good point um, <clears throat> on my list here. I know for me, and I'm sure Jeff will tell you the same thing. When this system went down that weekend, and we had absolutely no radios. Period. It was extremely stressful for me and him trying to figure out what are we going to do how are we going to deal with this we don't have full-time help you know i don't have a second full-time person jeff doesn't have a second full-time person how are we going to dispatch we don't have a dispatcher so we can't you know i can't wake up at two in the morning and make 35 phone calls to try to get people to start responding to a you know a structure fire or a, somebody having a heart attack you know every minute counts so that's an extreme it was extremely stressful for me, I know that. Trying to figure out what do we do, how do we deal with this, who the hell is going to dispatch? You know, it's one thing to get some volunteers to help for a couple of days. Ben was one of them. Um, and we were beating our heads trying to figure out what do we do. I know Gene's, I think you might have got a hold of the Bible PD or somebody got a hold of the guy from the Bible PD, which you did. That was a huge help. So. We managed to get through a couple days, but I'm saying to myself, I'm like, what, what are we going to do if we got to wait three weeks and we got a dispatch? And using our people worked. We got lucky, but they're not trained dispatchers. No. And they're not I know we practically lived at the station throughout the whole thing. And they're not going to do it for weeks. Like I said, it's one thing to get a couple days and get a bunch of volunteers. and So that was a major... That became a pretty major issue of what does this mean for the future, you know, um, which... We'll, we'll get to here shortly. Question? Yep. I'm sorry to go back, but I, That's right. I don't remember when this all started too well, even though know, I was probably around. But who who owns that building? Well, okay. What's the status of the building so and the land it's on? What happened was, and I've got the paper, some paperwork in here on it, in 1974, Jackson decided they didn't want to use red phones anymore. You remember red phones? Yes. Um, so everybody was on red phones and we decided we wanted a radio system. So Bartlett didn't want in and Jackson got the radio frequency, put a radio in the base lodge of Tyrol ski area with an antenna on the palm lift. So we have a land lease that is pretty vague that talks about a radio system for Jackson at Tyrol and the Palm Lift. It's really vague, but that's what it talks about. So that's how the radio started. Somewhere after 74, um, after we had already gone from red phones to radios, Bartlett jumped on board somewhere along the lines. I don't have like that exact date. And then as things changed, not sure exactly, but a radio moved from the base lodge to the top of the mountain. I'm guessing maybe after Tyrell closed. Um, and at that time there was power up there. And there was, there was power up there. We had a backup generator, which was a pain. And then things in 95 or so was when this was built, thereabouts. I don't know if it was 92. 90. It was around, shortly around when I came in 90, so it was 90, 92, I don't know, it was when we did away with the generator and went solar. It was pretty, it was somewhere early 90s. So do we have a lease up there now? Jackson has a ground lease, which is, gives us the use of the property. 
Um, it's never been changed since 74. Um, I did ask about updating it five, six, seven years ago with Progen, and he, he, his comment was, nah, we don't need to do anything. You guys can do whatever you want. Now the property is sold. Well, that's what I was just going to say. It, it's sold, right? it's, it has officially sold, I think, last week. Yeah. Um, and so Jackson was working on, Progen had called the selectmen, and we were working on trying to get the lease squared around. We got a bunch of updated wording of exactly where the radios are, exactly how we access it, all that stuff. That was submitted from the town lawyer and everything that came back from the buyer and from Progen was, I think it came from the buyer, not so much Progen, was they didn't want to do anything until the sale was complete. Like Progen didn't want to jeopardize the sale. I actually met the new owner one of the days I was going up there to fix the radio system. He happened to pull in and was checking the place out. I get it. it, it I don't think we'll have any issues with them at all, none whatsoever. Um, and we're push, for me, it was push comes to shove that it would just have to go out in a domain and take it if, right. they, if they want to give us a hard time. Yeah, it I, doesn't sound like it's going to go that way. But the thing is, we need to get those in for our that, That's I can't even imagine that. We don't, we're not 100% sure. We got to get them up there to check their equipment. Well, forget that. It's still not a good situation. If that means they can get in there to work on their equipment, they could unhook this one. I mean, <laughs> it, it doesn't make sense. That I don't. I our don't whole system is subject to someone else's it, getting in there. I mean, and that'll be a matter of the selectmen having a discussion with the observatory, and, and uh, that's going to probably be a lawyer battle. That's my guess. No, well, I don't they, they have a lease or an agreement to use it. I don't remember. Whatever. Mount <coughs> Washington Observatory. There's a copy of the Mount Washington Ops. This is from Ed Doobie to the selectmen. Uh, 07. And this is a copy of the minutes to the selectmen's meeting. If anybody wants to read it, it's kind of scattered around a little bit. But uh, so we don't know if they actually have a lease or not right now. They just, I think, got permission from the selectmen okay. to so use it. Oh. <laughs> Unless there's a something. So actually, the meeting Jackson. today. Is <laughs> a revoke that? We are here. No. No. Today, your meeting is revoked. That he has <laughs> up. I want to hear a little bit more about mm -hmm. There is some advantages to having the observatory up there, and Kevin can. I mean, they've been there 10, 15 years, and this is the first time we've had an interference thing. Um, yeah, they, mon they monitor our battery system on, on our radio on our system, which is kind of nice. And talking to their technician, I guess right now they run on, they run like a uh, Wi-Fi network between Anatash, Cranmore, Mount Washington, Rock Mountain, they all talk to each other. It's, a, it's almost a constant Wi-Fi signal, and they're operating on 900 megs right now, but they're planning on upgrading everything to 2.8 gigahertz, which is way up in the radio spectrum. That might help things, I don't know. But I think the thing to do is, I think if we, you know, they're going to still stay there, is like this spring, have whoever they hire as their, you know, electrical technician and velocities up there, have them the same time and they can all look at that on their equipment and you know spectrum scopes and you can see all that. See if there's any gonna be any interference or whatever. Yeah. Um, and maybe they should have an agreement like I said, you know, we spent three thousand dollars already and some kind of agreement, you know, they have to do interference again, you know, and pay for all So I, I'm with you, Gene. I don't disagree with you at all. I'm hundred percent with you. And I and I think that's something we'll have to work through and look at you know, and, and figure out if that is going to be what we need to do. Mm -hmm. So that that's definitely not, don't you worry, that's right there in the old bank, wondering what if we're going to have to go that route. Um, but are we going to give them an opportunity to show that they won't interfere? Is that? Yes. I, I get it. So the other thing we should talk about before we get into future upgrades is access to Tyrol um, in the winter, especially. Um, 
think we're going to have to, the towns or the town, one of the towns or something is going to have to step up. Um, we don't have any way to get up there. I've been supplying a snowmobile to go up Tyrol in the winter since 1990. Before that, I know some other people, Billy supplied a snowmobile. Um, you know, it's probably time to step up and purchase something that is available at a moment's notice. I mean, when the radio system goes down, you, you want to get it fixed or figure out what's wrong ASAP. Um, the days of borrowing probably needs to stop. I don't mind, but I'm not going to be around forever. I could be someone going to Pittsburgh and they may not be available. Um, the town of Jackson did step up and buy a UTV a couple of years ago with some money we got. Um, so we have bought that, which makes summer access a lot easier than a pickup. So it, Jackson has stepped up and um, done some of that. It's probably something you're just going to have to do. And you've got to have, we've looked at tracks that go on a UTV, which is fairly expensive um, to be able to make them use them in the winter. But there is snowstorms in the winter where you're not getting up there with the tracks on a UTV. Um, I, I've been up and down that mountain with ski tour and snowcat before because that was the only way we could get up there with a big antenna. Um, I'd love to find a used snowcat that would gain us, that would give us almost guaranteed access and not be trying to deal with 52 below zero wind chill factor getting up there with a snowmobile and a suit. Um, but a snowmobile is probably going to have to either be a snowmobile or I, I don't know what kind of luck you got to have to find any used snowcat or trying to find a donation of one or something like that. But a snowmobile is something the towns are, somebody's going to have to figure out about setting them, setting us up with. Well, that's something definitely, which is a money item. You know, a snowmobile that would be good to access up there. I mean, if you could buy it, you're going to spend Snowmobiles are 15, 18 grand new now. I mean, whether you could find a used one or not, that would be sufficient. Maybe you could cut that price down a eight or 10 grand. But um, I know we spent 20 on a UTV, just to give you an example. So that's something that definitely is going to get considered soon. Your snowmobile sounds like it's been used pretty well. Mine? Yeah. And just a case, tell me about the snowmobiles. Um, back in, I don't know what year it was, when Dave Otis was still around, I know he, there's a really steep section that you, you've got to get going, especially yeah. when it's unpacked. Mm -hmm. And uh, Dave rolled his machine there, um, and luckily he wasn't there. And then I think Pat Roberts. Pat rolled one of mine. Pat, Pat rolled one of, his, yes. yeah, one of your slides. There's a section, the, so, the steepest part, which is up close to the top, there's times I've had to make four or five passes just to try to get it packed. That every time you gain a little bit. I mean, sadly, the sadly I went up there when it was so cold. We were, you know, we were going through that much snow, and it took a couple, it took a couple <clears throat> passes to get up there. No, it wasn't. It was. I want to go up the Osby Mountain. Was it that? It was before that. Before that. It was before that. We were going up the Osby Mountain. And I couldn't, I took four or five passes for me just to bust open a spot so that we could then go up and down. And you can't do it with a passenger on. Yeah, that ain't never happening again. <laughs> Can we upgrade the trail going up and down? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, so, it's plenty, it's, we got plenty of width, it's just steep. It's steep and, it's, and it does this. Well, it's, it's not, it's not it's a it, 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 it leans one way and then it leans the other way and it's all ledge. So that's something that we got to start thinking about and purchase some money. So now we're to the future. Um, we probably got to think about some upgrades to the whole system, doing something maybe different than what we have. Um, pretty good chance. We might have to stick with Tyrol. Maybe, maybe there's going to be, we do some study on it. We can uh, 
maybe try to find a better site that works for Jackson. Um, if the radios are up and working, my guess is I get 90% coverage in Jackson for Jackson Fire Department. Bartlett, we've done some, I think we were at what, 70? Bartlett Fire was at 70% maybe. Um, Bartlett Jackson Ambulance, was 70% or so for them. So, Tyrol is a really good site for Jackson Fire, um, for responders that are trying to deal with Violet Village, Crawford Notch. Um, it becomes an issue for Jackson on the EMS side. The fire side, it's, it's not a huge issue because we get 90%. I mean, the remoteness in the winter, which is when the system always seems to break, is in the winter, mm -hmm. becomes an issue for the fire. But, um, for Jackson, it's on the EMS side. If you have Bartlett Jackson Ambulance members that live in Bartlett Village and they're trying to respond to you having a heart attack and they can't talk to each other, it's an issue for them. Um, so I'll let Jeff talk about that because he's the one with reception issues. Um, so so we've done multiple studies. I've gone down to Madison to Oak Hill where the Sheriff's Tower is getting off the channel that reaches Tyrol onto a backup channel. We hit pretty much everything we tried. Um, I think a lot of the problems with EMS is the fact that they all operate with a portable radio. Portable radios are only good for about a mile. They're, they're, they're designed to work at a scene, not across 100 square miles. Um, and that's why the fire department doesn't have that much of an issue because we have mobile radios in every vehicle where the EMS people are responding in their cars using a little 5 watt radio instead of a 100 watt mobile that we have in our vehicles. That's I think where their biggest issue is. Um, we ran into a lot of problems. So if you're standing on top of Tyrol, which is at 2200 feet, you're looking down over the town of Jackson. You're looking right into everything. It's beautiful. It's, it, the antenna's all right there. You look off towards Bartlett, and it's all trees. You have Mount Stanton, which cuts a lot of our signal off. Um, and as soon as you get past that, you've got issues up in the notch, which are there's almost no service up in the notch at all. One of the things we looked at is the same type of situation that Osby Valley just went to, is a simulcast microwave system, which is multiple sites that talk to each other at the same time. So you can actually throw a signal around a mountain. Um, that's, that was one of the things that we were looking at. It's going to be, it's uh, approximately $75,000 a site. Uh, yeah. So we could be four sites, so it's we pretty, could big, be pretty big money item. One of the things that we really would, were hoping to do is the, uh, the propagation study this year and have the professionals come in and tell us where our strengths and our weaknesses were. We have, we have come up with, I think, eight sites total, six or eight sites total, and we want to have them tell us which are the strongest sites. Um, I did get a hold of the owners of the tower on Aditash, it looks like there's some room for us to get in there. There's power supply. We just have to pay a monthly bill. Um, there is an observation tower in the experimental forest, which is huge. We could see if that was going to work for us. Tyrol could be a site. Glen Station might be a site. When we put a tone out that Saturday that we lost radio communication, Jay seems to think that most of his people received from that site. So maybe a taller antenna with one of the microwave programs there would be a, be a big help. But we've got a long ways to go and that's why we were hoping to, to get this propagation study completed this year instead of putting it off another year. So there's a cost associated with the propagation study. There's also a systems option study that we need to do, which is probably no cost to that, but it's a matter of me, Jeff, and Osby Mountain and whoever looking at systems op op or options, like he talks about a microwave link, or keeping what we got, trying to improve that, or going to a repeater system, or a text messaging thing. There's, there's, 
some options. It, it doesn't look like a lot of the options are very good, um, except for either what we have, which has its own issues, especially for Bartlett, um, or the microwave link. There's, there's, there can be some issues with the microwave link on Tyrol because of its remoteness. So we, we, the point is, and part of the reason for having you guys here is to let you know, you know, this is a big item and it's going to take some money and it's going to take some time. Um, but, but we've got some stuff. We've got some stuff we got to figure out and we got to spend some money. I mean, it's, it's a pretty big item. What about hearts? I mean, they get, you know, this is their, so, this is their issue as well. I mean, they get, so they want to drop some money up. <laughs> that, that's a really good, I thought a lot about that. And that's why there's, there's two things. Hearts location, one is it got to be explained to them that this is an issue for them because we have reception issues. Right. If we have reception issues and you're from hearts and you, you want us to deal with your emergency, we need radios. Um, It's expensive. The problem with radios is the cost is there whether you use them or not. Whether you have one taxpayer or a thousand taxpayers or three thousand taxpayers, the cost is the cost. It's not like a truck. If it doesn't get used, it doesn't wear out as quick. But it's not presently not paying anything. They haven't paid anything for radios up to they're this point. Not they're not directly to us. The town of Bartlett to handle their coverage. Bartlett has a contract to supply okay. services for them. So. As far as I'm concerned, that, that 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 cost, do they need to understand that this is an issue for them, and it's it's either they gotta have to step up to the plate, whether it's direct or whether it's through your fire services contract that you get paid to supply fire to to Hearts location. I don't know that'll be between I guess you and them, um, but as far as Jay Henry's concerned as Jackson Fire Chief. Uh, Jackson's going not going to pay fifty percent of something that other other towns are using. You know, it's we're going to. Really? <laughs> <laughs> I'll be standing up at town meeting voting something down that we're only not going to pay a nickel more than thirty three and a third percent when, when for a radio you, system. When you talk about, I, and I might get the language wrong, but I think it was the microwave system where each location costs 75000 right. Could our location simply pay for their own location? And would, would that solve the problem if they put, if, if there was a location in Hart's location that they paid 100% for? I guess that would be between you and them. I, I, I would suggest that, that I mean, they should probably the, put a little bit towards the, the, uh, it, the it, propagation it, study so that we know where the right location is. I meant in terms of how the system works. Is that one way you could solve the problem? It, it, about I, I don't yeah. think so. Okay. Because you don't? the microwave link works in conjunction with all the sites. Right, you would have to so link in with us. I, I think the percentage would be based on the whole project. Right. Not, but, not but, just one site. But I think that if we were to go with that, and I'm only speaking for myself, and Bartlett paid for Bartlett locations and Jackson paid for Jackson locations, I can't imagine the two towns saying, oh yeah, and we'll pay for an apart's location, um, location also. But, yeah. but I think it's more of a percentage of the whole, the whole project because they all work together. Gotcha. Right, Kevin? On a microwave yeah, they all have to have So it's not just parts location would only use That's their right. site. No, I they, they still would might they still need to operate on the other sites too because they talk to each other. And you know if you had if you have an EMS responder coming from Jackson to respond to a heart's location call, then the Jackson site is what sending out that might call. might send the signal out halfway and then it might switch to another site. Okay. So it, it's it's about the whole project, not just individuals gotcha. location of sites, I think. And that's what the study would be useful for. Yeah. Um, we're using we're just are not cheap. Main the other the other thing, if we do do a new type of system, maintenance costs are gonna go through the roof. Um, right now we have one site. Um, maintenance costs are fairly reasonable, fairly cheap. If we multiply that times five, four or five, you can see what's going to happen. Um, but you've also it, seen what happens when you put all your eggs in one basket. 
The other thing that we're working on is, or at least I'm working on, is, and I don't know, we don't know, me and Kevin don't know for sure that it's going to work, but we're trying to figure out a way that we can have two antennas on a fire station that in the drastic event that Tyrol goes down, that we can take our spare radio, plug it in at the fire station and maybe made up make it work might not get all the responders depending on where they live but if you could at least get a crew going so that's kind of an emergency thing that that we're working on that, uh, that i budgeted for to try to figure out like I, I gotta do something and i gotta buy some antennas put it on jackson station and try to come up with an emergency way to make this work somehow if we go through what we went through a few weekends ago when that cold spell um, we don't know for sure if we can make that work, but I'm hoping we can. Something's got to be done. We can't rely. We don't have enough people to rely on dispatchers. Did we talk, I say we, you, anyone talk to the sheriff's department? Or? That's, when, when we figure out options, then there'll have to be a discussion with the sheriff's office as to what we can do with dispatch and what we can do because they they did a study a few years ago and i must confess i don't know what the outcome was but they they have i assume they're still having problems sometimes they had applied for a grant because they had came to me in the town asking permission to get on tyrol and that disappeared whatever they were working on at that time if that's what you're talking about well right? i remember something like that yeah, yeah. and and i think that for whatever reason that disappeared in one way and they didn't go with that if I think what they do is <clears throat> the sheriff's department has a, um, a pretty complex radio system down on Oak Hill, kind of Madison, and um, they own Oak Hill, right? I don't know the site they do. So, so what happens? They also, I guess, the sheriff's department put a put a radio somewhere on Atitash, and now they link from the sheriff's department. To Oak Hill to Atitash and backwards. Which but doesn't work all the time. It's in a yeah. ski shack. It's yeah. down in, it's not at the top of the mountain. Mm -hmm. It's down on the ski shack. And it's mm -hmm. not direct link. Like we have a UHF link and then we were just talking about a microwave link. These are direct line of sight links. That's all they do, direct line of sight. They're using um, the VHF radio just on a different frequency. It's like one repeater talking to another repeater and you know, snow can interfere, heavy rain, um, all that kind of stuff. So, But it's helped them out a lot. They had a lot of dead spots and it does work. Right, and I, was, yeah. I, would, I know they still, well, I, know. I, I, I think they still do have a lot of them. Oh, like issues. Dead spots yeah, and issues. Yeah, 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 so yeah. I would have but it's better than what they had, because the only site oh, yeah. used that I'm was, just saying they was Oak Hill down yeah. there from. And they wouldn't, the they wouldn't allow, I know in past talks that we couldn't use Repeater A, B, C, and D, whatever those repeaters they had, one on Atatash, one on Oak Hill, somewhere else that the PD used. No, yeah, no. Like we couldn't, allowed, we couldn't yeah. get in, we can't get in on those. So there'll be some discussion. Why down. can't you? It's a sheriff's office, it's not a fire department channel. That's what I understand. So they didn't, they wouldn't allow it. Yeah, right. They, they don't want the fire people. And it's the amount of traffic. Yeah. Radio well, traffic. See. But the sheriff's department doesn't get to make that decision, okay? So the delegation or whoever. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> I'm not saying they would change their mind, but I'm just saying it. Just I understand the sheriff's department would not, but as I said, we just you need to know they don't make that decision yeah. unilaterally. No, it's so really maybe the best decision, like we're discussing with about here. But now we're about state police. Because I know that's they all work off of Washington. No, yeah, well, yeah, Washington and Troopy down there on uh, yeah. what's the old ski area? Because we they, 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 they had upgraded their yeah. system a few years ago. Yeah. And Washington yeah. isn't the answer. I believe they're on a different frequency level, though. They're on, aren't they on ultra high? Uh, well, the links are, but no, they're, they're still down at the HF level, but they don't, or high band, I mean, they don't. You don't hear a lot of traffic, especially from Troop hmm. Washington isn't necessarily a good answer for a bus because everything blows right over us. I know DOT, Glen Shed, Pinkham Shed had a lot have a lot of issues with reception on their frequency, which is off of Washington, as it like flies right over them and gets down in the valleys. Um, I think 
we were so dispatched. Violet and Jackson, the, the, the biggest the majority of our problems compared to anywhere in the valley oh, or yeah, beyond the valley down in the Ossipies, is we're a pretty small area with a lot of big mountains and valleys. You got right. Pinkham Notch, Bear Notch, Crawford Notch, Dundee. You got all these places that are like in a in a notch that we just can't get. You're not trying you're to you're get not them 100 percent everywhere is just not okay. possible. Um, whereas you, you look there, you think about Conway or the Ossipies. Yeah, there's some bigger mountains, but they're everything's spread out a little farther. Right. It's not spread out up here. And if you start looking at the acreage, like Bartlett, for example, you look at the acreage of Bartlett compared to, say, the acreage of the Conways, and we're trying to cover a, a large area with a pretty minimal system. Um, Would we come up with a total of 167 square miles for, a, for both towns and our location? Bartlett's 74.8, I think. Conway is almost the same size, the whole town of Conway. And then Jackson 67. It was 167 square miles that we cover with this radio system. So in, in the one that we have is low power draw, pretty simple, pretty cheap. But it's definitely looking like the time is coming where we gotta look at some options to change, I guess. Change when you say change, change the location, or could we make Tyrol the best? Well, I think Tyrol is going to have to, be, unless we can find a site that will work. In or Jackson. multiple sites. But so can we make Tyrol the most perfect site? The remoteness is not solvable. We can't. It costs you five hundred thousand dollars to put power up there all the time. One of the problems with Tyrol is if we go to a microwave link, it draws a lot of power. So we need to like quadruple our solar system which is going to be tough in the building that we're sharing with somebody. Um, even without sharing, it's going to be tough. You can't just put power up there. I mean, the power that used to be up there was on chairless built, you know. Um, it's all ledge, so it's not like you can just dig a trench down through there easy. Um, so there's a lot of issues for, that make Tyrol remote and difficult, wind, by mics, all that stuff. Um, but for Jackson, it, it, it may, we may have to stick with it unless we can make another site work in conjunction with whatever we look at in the future for a multiple site system. We did go up last year. Yeah, last year we cut down probably a half an acre with Mr. Progen's permission. And it <laughs> did improve our... Yeah, we will. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> It did improve our radio communications in Bartlett drastically. That's going to be a constant problem. Um, trees are growing, and it's not like you can get up there with equipment or chippers, so it becomes a, 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 night, mess. a nightmare mess. And how do you clean it up? And how do you, you know, you're trying to hang down over a steep ledge to try to cut trees. That's that's. And we can't go. We could go higher, but. With the wind and the ice and everything up there, we'd have to put guy wires in the, in the granite. Um, and it's not, it's, it hasn't been suggested to us from our radio technicians to do that because of the problems with the elevation. So, step one is looking like for as soon as we can is to do the propagation study, which was seven, six, six, seven grand, something like that, between the two towns. towns. Uh, or three towns. Um, I, I understand Hart's locations, you know, small town, not a lot of tax base, but I can't help that. Um, so somebody's going to have to sit down with them and discuss this with them. Who performs the propagation study? A uh, company like Osby Mountain Electronics. And tell me again what that study, what information were you getting? I was told it is reception, how the frequency works, 154, 145, whatever it is, and the reception of that. It's not necessarily a complete study of everything known to mankind, but what we need to do with radios, but it's specific to that frequency and how we can get around where we need to get around. It'll show strengths and weaknesses. We have an old study okay. that was done in 87. 
But would it also show us other locations, or is that would be a different story? We will give them the locations, and they'll test each site. Okay, all right. But we would have to say, try this, try this. And or so they maybe they come up with a site, too. Okay. I think that's part of it. Um, what, what isn't included in that is system options, like microwave link versus repeater gotcha. versus tin can and strings, you know, which I'd love to go back to, or red But points. this is a study that might answer the question, how can these dead zones no longer be dead zones? Or most of them. Okay. Uh, with, with, probably with the, I think that's based on thinking about going microwave link, correct? Right? I'm not sure. I'm yeah, if, you, if you're going to go simple repeater, you're going to have to have multiple sites with multiple channels. If you do the microwave system, it's all on the same channel. So we can stay with the frequency that we have now as our primary dispatching frequency. Okay. One of the things that I had looked at is, is next year putting up an operational repeater on Adatash in the same building that will give us a secondary channel because once we're dispatched, we're supposed to get off the dispatch channel, go to our operations channel. So freeze that up for any other emergencies. And that's another thing that I was going to come to you with next year, but that might get put off a year or two. Oh. Oh. It's been a few things right now. Barely making it. It's worked the last uh, couple of times. Uh, last night we had a tone and I had to call dispatch and tell them all we got was our pager and there was no voice. So they had to redo it. Every other tone, it's something different. We're pretty well getting sick of it. <laughs> I'm hoping the antenna gets here quick so we can get them up there. And the other problem is if the antenna doesn't get here until mud season, then we've got an access issue during mud season on top of that. Really. So I'm hoping things get rolling soon to at least fix what we got. And just remember, the new antenna is only going to put us where we were. It's yeah. not going to improve anything gotcha. beyond that. <clears throat> oh, yes, a lot. <laughs> we need a lot. As <laughs> long as you're going to do that antenna, as I said, I wouldn't hold back looking around. It's ordered, it's on the way. I know. Yeah. Oh, <clears throat> the Littleton <clears throat> Hospital lost the exact same antenna this year. Like two months or three months before we lost ours. I love it was a windstorm. I mean, ours was definitely from that. It was from a windstorm we had, I don't know, it was like a month. It was in early January or something. We had crazy winds. It was right after that that they busted. How long did it take? Well, that's, I'm someone had one in stock because yeah, Osby and Electronics does work on the uh, Littleton Hospital. And um, I think it sounds like they were back on air like in no time. Oh, okay. So maybe someone had it in stock. You know, a lot of these little providers, I mean, like, I mean, I know some of those little private companies have been around forever, but nobody wants to stock that stuff. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and we may have to consider stocking an antenna because right. the records show that. We, we, we go from or something. Um, so like we may have to. I put in the budget for this year to replace the antenna. I've also put in the budget some so emergency money to try to make an emergency setup for it. And we may have to consider a second antenna just so we have one on stock. You know, um, and then I put in money in the budget for the study, half of the propagation study. So. I don't know what you guys had budgeted for, but that's, we, we budgeted for that stuff. Okay. Can't say we didn't tell you so. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, and that was the idea, was to upgrade, update you guys and make sure you are aware of what's coming down the pipe, because it's, it, it's not cheap. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.